We're back on the channel. A uh, little uh, steroid induced uh, feeling a little bit better. Allergies have been absolutely horrific. I've been kind of sick for six weeks. But uh, anyway, on to the business at hand. Um, looked at a new game uh, called Pen and Paper Football. And a beast of a content producer, Jason Flash Football, uh, talked about this on his channel, and uh, I'm pretty new to him, uh, but the stuff that I had watched uh, looked very interesting, so I basically I took it as a recommendation and uh, looked into it, and it had a lot of elements that I like um, that allow for a lot of creativity and... Um, a, a, just a plethora of different ways you can go with this. Uh, it's a very open-ended book by Jake Slater, I do believe. I made... I, I can't wait to see. No, I'm sorry. John Slater. I don't know. The font's weird. But anyway, I picked it up on uh, drive through RPG. A couple of bucks. Um, read through it. Uh, saw how how I could use it. So I have created, I'll give you the setup now for this particular league, and uh, I'm not sure how the backside of this works, but it's, it's kind of like a, uh, uh, a football world generator. So the setup for us is I have um, rolled up the teams, uh, I have set up the divisions, and the details of this is 1945. The NFL is pseudo-expanding in a kind of a test market way. So they are um, checking out, um, maybe going further south, going west, and integrating uh, with black and white players. So each roster is 50-50 uh, black and white players. So... The only thing that I haven't, I didn't mess with, which would have been pretty easy to do, uh, is to change the scoring. So the scoring is going to be modern football. So let's just say they've, uh, they've added some uh, new rules to open up scoring, and it's uh, a little bit more modern. Uh, well, it's, it is modern football back in 1945. So we've got the 1945 setting. The politics of the day in 45 at play. Uh, just getting out of the war. Things are getting better in the country. And uh, we're looking to expand football. So uh, we're set up here for our first matchup. Which is going to be the Charlotte Knights and the Savannah Lions. So this is Savannah, Georgia and Charlotte Knights. And if you're familiar with the game. Um, based on how well teams do. They get bonuses at the end. They can expand. Uh, they can take over other markets. So we'll get into that. Um, the way I have this set up, we'll get into it much quicker than normal because I'm not really going to be playing out the games. Uh, in fact, I have everything automated uh, through Excel. So we'll, we'll spin through the games pretty quickly. I'm going to try a few things maybe here at the beginning. And... Um, See if we like them, see if I like them, um, and using some, uh, letting the AI give us a, a news reporter style uh, update uh, and that sort of thing. So let's give it a whirl, uh, see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, first game we have the Charlotte Knights and the Savannah Lions. So this is going to come up, uh, it's going to just pop, pop the score from left to right each quarter. It's going to go quickly. The game will be over in about 10 seconds. Uh, I've got some stuff set up that I'm going to plug into uh, the AI. So it'll take a minute or two, I don't know, 30 seconds to generate our story. Uh, and then we'll listen to that and to basically get a game recap. Instead of just getting the score, uh, it's going to give us a game recap. And it's based on the statistics of uh, these guys uh, and for a little Easter egg hunt. Uh, see if you can... So these cards are based on 1950 Bowman football. 
uh, which were, I think, the first color football, well, not the first for color, but uh, the first color Bowman cards. And uh, so they're based on that. They have a old kind of dirty look to them. Uh, but a lot of the players and player names, which are fictional, but this does opens up the opportunity, which is uh, to maybe like take some uh, actual NFL players and merge them in, take baseball players that uh, weren't getting their chance in Major League Baseball, maybe Willie Mays. Uh, it's just lots of lots of interesting things we can do in a completely fictional world. So, um, but anyway, so you roll up uh, stats. Which, uh, so let's just take, uh, let's take Haas Booth, for example. Uh, you might be able to figure out who he's based on, uh, but he's our, so, I'm surprised I didn't label this, but this is our quarterback, this is our star running back, this is our star wide out, uh, this is our line, our star lineman, uh, linebacker, and cornerback. And you roll a uh, three six-sided dice to determine their statistics. No, no redos, no do-overs. What it is, is what it is. So it's a lot like uh, Dungeons & Dragons base system where uh, you get a plus uh, number for your score. So essentially, Wada Young, despite being an 11, he's really a, a 3. His, he will contribute to the offense a 3, as will Haas Booth, as will... So uh, some of these are different, and major. Your, basically your stars make up the difference. You get a one-point bonus for being the home team. I added in a uh, smidgen of a random element to go along with that. Um, but that's kind of the setup uh, for the regular season. We're going to award one team from each division. We'll play for our uh, Super Cup championship. I think Super... I think that's what we called it. Uh, yeah, the Super Cup. That's what we called it. Uh, we'll play for that and... Um, so we'll see, but we'll go through game one. So this is the Charlotte Knights versus the Savannah Lions. Uh, big stars defense uh, for Charlotte is really strong, but they are weak at cornerback. And uh, both teams are extraordinarily balanced. Same on offense, but um, the Savannah Lions have probably the best player in the league in Tank Terrell. He's one of the best. Both teams are weak at corner, obviously. Um, so this should be a should be a tight matchup. Uh, so let's get underway and see what happens. Here we go. Game one, 1945 initial. I don't even tell you the name of the league. Uh, minor league football. So here we go. Charlotte on the board with the field goal. That's matched. Savannah takes the lead 10 to 6. Still leading 10 to 6, heading to the fourth quarter. That's not going to be enough. And Savannah's going to hold on to win 17 to 9. Clear that up. Let's go plug this into our AI. Let that give us a detailed report of the game and what happened. I'll grab that, and let's get our my favorite all-time announcer to tell us the story. Um, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I'm afraid there's going to be some pauses in this, but we'll just, we'll see how this goes. I'm doing all this on the fly. Savannah Lions outlast Charlotte, Charlotte Knights, Knights in defensive, defensive battle. battle. In an intense defensive showdown, the Savannah Lions emerged victorious over the Charlotte Knights with a final score of 17-9 in less, uh, <laughs> in their minor league football season opener. Both teams struggled to gain an, effect, uh, an offensive foothold early on. Okay, that's... The first quarter ended in a 3-3 tie with both teams. All right, we're going to put a kibosh on that. That's not working as well as I wanted. And Savannah's from a 35-yard... Okay, so let's go... Let's pause that. Let's go back to this. All right, so we're going to... Unfortunately, I uh, try not to do any editing. Um, so we're, we're going to just ignore that report. We're going to try a different reporter. And here's our report. 
on the Savannah and Charlotte game. Savannah Lions outlast Charlotte Knights in defensive battle. In an intense defensive showdown, the Savannah Lions emerged victorious over the Charlotte Knights with a final score of 17 to 9 in their minor league football season opener. Both teams struggled to gain an offensive foothold early on. The first quarter ended in a 3 to 3 tie, with both teams scoring field goals. Charlotte's via a 40 yard kick by rookie kicker Eddie Barnes and Savannah's from a 35 yard boot by Andy Collins. In the second quarter, the Lions' conservative yet effective strategy led to the game's first touchdown. Quarterback Tommy Swisher orchestrated a methodical drive, culminating in a 10-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Kent Francis. The Knights managed another field goal, this time from 45 yards, keeping the game close at 10-6 going into halftime. The third quarter saw a stalemate as both defenses held firm. Charlotte's linebacker Johnny Dawson was a standout, recording eight tackles and a sack. However, the Lions' defensive line, anchored by Frank Walker, matched their intensity, preventing any significant advancements by the Knights. Entering the final quarter, the Lions maintained their narrow lead. Dutch Ryan, Savannah's running back, broke through the Knights' defense with a 25-yard touchdown run, widening the gap to 17-6. Charlotte responded with another field goal from 38 yards out, reducing the deficit to 17-9. With the clock winding down, the Knights made a desperate push. Quarterback Wadi Young connected on a series of quick passes, moving Charlotte into the red zone. Facing fourth and goal from the 10-yard line with seconds remaining, Young's pass to Henry Simmons was intercepted by Lions cornerback Chino Hairston, sealing the victory for Savannah. Player of the game, Frank Walker. The Lions' defensive lineman dominated the trenches, recording seven tackles and three crucial sacks that stymied the Knights' offense. Walker's relentless pressure and key plays were instrumental in Savannah's hard-fought win. Okay, uh, I like that. So one minor hookup, uh, hiccup, so two. Minor hook, hiccup, three. <laughs> Hiccups along the way. Um, so I was trying to use some AI-generated voice with uh, having Pat Summerall basically give us a game summary uh, that had a little bit of a glitch. I may I may work on that a little bit more, but the guy who did the who did the uh, text to speech, I thought that was good. Um, so anyway, all right, let's let's see how quickly we can we can get one more game uh, underway there. So Frank Walker. Uh, superstar lineman again savannah's got a great great defense so uh that could be it could be one of the teams to watch here as we move forward so i've updated the standings and we've got the tallahassee rebels find them and they're going to be at so this is our east division playing first tallahassee rebels Versus the Virginia Stars, which is my area. Okay, let's update over here. All right, uh, I think we are ready to go for. Game number two of the minor league football league. Let's do a little quick assessment of the teams. So Tallahassee, um, strong at quarterback and running back, but very weak at wide receiver, uh, as Larry Hansen is their best receiver. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, they are uh, pretty weak up front, but very strong on the back end. Willie Bankhead, one of the best corners in the league. And for the Virginia Stars, uh, Leon May, the running back, is the star there. On the defensive side of the ball, they're fairly strong on the line and very strong uh, at corner also. So, uh, Tallahassee Rebels versus the Virginia Stars. Here we go. Game number two of the week one. Tallahassee on the board early, 3-0, no score in the second for either team. Third quarter, Tallahassee scored. They're up 10-0. That's probably going to be a winner, 17-0. Tallahassee on the road, shut out the Virginia Stars. Let's get a game report there. The standings here. I'm also keeping this by um, also keeping a little journal 
version um, seem to maybe get a little more into things when I write them down uh, and I have the pen and paper. So I'm doing that in addition to playing it out using some Excel uh, helping stuff. But uh, all right, so here's our game report for that game. Tallahassee Rebels shut out Virginia Stars in dominant performance. In a commanding display of football, the Tallahassee Rebels blanked the Virginia Stars, securing a decisive 17-0 victory in their season opener of the Minor League Football League. The Rebels struck first with a 28-yard field goal by kicker Jim Caldwell in the opening quarter, capitalizing on a drive fueled by a 20-yard run from running back Chappie Bell. The Virginia Stars, struggling to find their rhythm, ended the first quarter scoreless. Despite both teams' strong defensive plays in the second quarter, neither managed to put points on the board. Tallahassee's linebacker Ray Bird made a significant impact with five tackles and a sack, preventing any offensive breakthroughs by Virginia. The Stars' defensive line, led by Donald Filchok, managed to hold their ground but couldn't translate defensive stops into offensive momentum. The third quarter saw Tallahassee extend their lead. Quarterback Roy Avery connected with wide receiver Larry Hansen for a 15-yard touchdown pass, capping off a 75-yard drive that showcased Avery's precision passing and Bell's consistent rushing. Hansen's agility and speed were key in outmaneuvering the Stars' secondary. As the game moved into the final quarter, Tallahassee's dominance continued. Avery orchestrated another impressive drive, culminating in a five-yard touchdown run by Bell. This drive highlighted Avery's versatility, including a critical third-down conversion with a 12-yard scramble. Virginia's attempts to respond were thwarted by the Rebels' relentless defense. Cornerback Willie Bankhead sealed the shutout with a spectacular interception late in the game, his second of the day, thwarting any hope of a Stars comeback. Player of the game, Roy Avery. The Rebels' quarterback was instrumental in the victory, throwing for 200 yards and a touchdown while adding 50 rushing yards. Avery's leadership and playmaking abilities were crucial in Tallahassee's commanding performance, earning him top honors in the season opener. Okay, so I am also noting uh, player of the games. Uh, the player with the most of those is going to be our uh, MVP. So it adds a little uh, extra wrinkle. The stats obviously are all um, imaginary, but, um, but the player of the game... Uh, it, I have uh, this setup where I prompt the AI to give weight based on their ratings. So it's not just random uh, who does what. Uh, there, there is some logic behind it. But anyway, that's half of week one done. I uh, wanted to, while I was feeling pretty good, I wanted to get out a video and show this off. Um, pen and paper football. Uh, might be something you're interested in. It's certainly a price point you can't beat. For a dollar ninety nine, uh, again, um, make sure I get the name right. Jason Flash Football. Check his stuff out. Uh, he will blow your mind with the speed at which he pumps stuff out because it does mine. He's got a cool boxing game that I'm probably going to check out uh, down the road. And uh, he's like me, small channel. Uh, we're both I'm assuming he wants to grow his channel too, and uh, he looks like he produces a lot of neat and interesting ideas. So anyway, if you uh, haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so or throwing up a like. That would also be appreciated. Uh, hopefully more pen and paper football. And I have not abandoned uh, as uh, the out of the park uh, 19, uh, 1901 season. I, the series is maybe getting a little out of hand. The Americans uh, have won the first couple of games and... Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another game uh, with that or just do a review show. But uh, anyway, 1901 is still going, and I'm looking forward to posting that in the next day or so. Uh, more pen and paper football. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you soon.